Oh, Larry, your crazy antics and neurotic behavior have entertained us for years. Oh, Jesus Christ! What the hell? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Curb Your Enthusiasm episodes. Are you for real? For this list, we're choosing a mix of the best, funniest, and most memorable episodes Larry David has offered us via his improvised TV series. That's some weird stuff, man. All of which have us laughing and reminiscing years after they initially aired. Let's go! Okay. Number 10, The End. I'm not giving anybody my kidney, I just woke up. I'm gonna give things out now. Larry is certainly selfish, but once he discovers his parents are Christian, he's inspired to make the ultimate sacrifice in the finale of season five. Now your biological parents are Mr. and Mrs. Cohn, and they currently reside in Bisbee, Arizona. They're waiting your call. Giving up a kidney for a friend is never easy. You can have my kidney. So when Larry learns of his ultimate fate, it's thanks to his usual shtick that he manages to come back down to earth, literally. You're my guides? Yeah, but you, you are dead. You did die. Larry always ends up in awkward and crazy situations, and usually they're his own doing. But this episode also reminded us that despite his neurotic behavior, he's just as human as the rest of us. Jesus. Number nine, Crazy Eyes Killer. I'll snap on your world as if my name was Godzilla. I'm coming for you, mother I'm your Crazy Eyes Killer. He's as antisocial as they come, but that never stopped Larry from keeping interesting company. Crazy Eyes Killer, you gotta, you're getting married, but you want to, you know, can't do that anymore. No, 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 I have to do that, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? After befriending a rapper who's engaged to Wanda Sykes, who also happens to be his wife Cheryl's friend, Larry lets it slip that Crazy Eyes has been unfaithful to his soon-to-be wife. I gotta go call Wanda now? He, he, he. Of course I am! She's engaged to him! I don't care, so don't blame me! You can't do that! Larry always seems to get himself into trouble, usually because he can't keep quiet. And this episode from season three is no exception. Larry! You popping them Larry, I hear you popping them fing bubbles! Get your ass down here! Ultimately, though, it's Larry's first meeting with Crazy that stands out most, as he offers lyrical suggestions for his new rap song. I would change the mother to bitch. Because the bitch. bitch. Yes, because bitch is, is a word that you would use to somebody who, who you don't who you disrespect. Number eight, opening night. Opening night. It's opening night. A man of many talents and exploits, one of Larry's most impressive must surely be his Broadway performance. Just don't tell Mel Brooks. You know the show, The Producers? Sure, yeah, yeah, big, big show. Okay, yeah. I'm in the show. I'm gonna get some tickets today, and I'll give you a ticket. How about I know, that? Yeah, take a ticket, ticket. After a season of buildup, the musical was most definitely a hit, though it took Larry and co star David Schwimmer putting aside their differences over who lost the watch to make it so. How do you feel about reimbursing me for the watch? It seems to me your watch was missing. Don't worry, Larry. We all know the watch was already lost when you found it. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's David Schwimmer's watch. No, no, I found it in my Yeah, watch. no, I know you found it. You found it in the hotel, right? Yes, yes. Number seven, the bare midriff. You know about the, 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 the bare midriff and the, the belly button? While Larry usually has qualms with behavior, Maureen's bare midriff is a reminder that Larry has trouble moving past what most would never even consider. This is all exposed in the stomach. It's not too much trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can start wearing longer shirts. Whenever her midriff presents itself, Larry simply can't take his eyes off of it. What is this? You know, whatever's happening there, I'm fine with it. My stomach? What does that mean? You know, the protuberance and all, all of it. His perfect world always seems to be off by about an inch. But when his life is on the line and he grabs onto the only thing available to him, he doesn't seem as concerned with his life as he is horrified by what he's forced to face. Poor Larry. Maybe an inch further down, cover up the belly button. That's all. Perfect world, perfect world. Number six, the black swan. You think I wanted to kill it? I didn't want to kill a swan. Let us explain something to you. His reputation precedes him, and for good reason. You killed a swan. You killed a down. swan. Shut up. Shut up. Not too many people can kill a man by simply yelling at him, but Larry certainly did. And yet he finds himself completely innocent and more concerned with tomorrow's golf time than what has just happened. I 
have a couple of things I wanted to discuss with you, actually. Now that's cold-blooded. After he goes on to kill a swan, Funkhauser's distaste for Larry's killing spree bubbles over. But Larry makes it clear that the dining table is not the place for such a discussion. Hey, let me remind you of something, asshole. You're talking way too loud about swan killing. Number five, the carpool lane. I used to see the traffic. The only thing moving is the carpool lane. I'll never make it. I'm just gonna go home. This episode from season four shows how resourceful and cunning Larry is. Get in the car. With two tickets to the baseball game and no one to go with, he must find a way to use the carpool lane so he can get there on time. Taking to the streets, Larry decides to hire a professional <clears throat> carpool lane assistant. No, I'm going to go to the game or you're going to take me back to the corner or I'm going to call my mother pimp. How about that? Of course, now she also wants to see the game. All right, well, put, 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 put your thing up over there. Make yourself presentable. By the end of the episode, Larry finds himself finally able to relax with his new friend, which goes on to show how much of a people person he really is, so long as they have reasonable rates. You ever looking for a good blowjob at a reasonable rate? <laughs> She's your gal. Number four, the table read. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold the work. Let's take our places for the table read. Season 7 promised the Seinfeld reunion that fans have dreamed of for years, and it finally appears to be happening here. Who are these two right here? It's Jerry Seinfeld and Julia Louis-Dreyfus. <laughs> so Jerry's tapping that ass, huh? This episode isn't just awesome for the behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to make Seinfeld happen, but also for the rivalry between Larry and Jason Alexander, who portrayed the Larry David-type character in the Seinfeld sitcom. Good morning. Hey. Mission accomplished. As things get heated over a pen. It's not the pen I gave you. This is not replacing the pen. This is just giving me another pen. No, you didn't say get the same pen. You said you need to replace the pen. It reminds us all how hilarious a show about nothing can really be. It's not the pen I gave you. You asked me to replace right, the I'll pen. Tip it. You didn't replace the pen. I replaced it. Number three, Larry versus Michael J. Fox. You see that? Was Michael J. Fox? Yes. See that kind of head shake he just gave me? In the final episode of season eight, and what may also be the series finale, since the show's been on indefinite hiatus since 2011, Larry's neurotic behavior finally becomes too much when he goes up against the Parkinson's disease-ridden Michael J. Fox. Hey, you're shaking. He would not never do anything like that on purpose. Michael J. Fox? Never in a million years. Larry's belief that Fox is lying about the extent of his condition is tested with his trope of staring someone down to see if they're lying. Okay. The combat boots definitely seem excessive, but it's a testament to Larry and his show that no subject is out of line, even when it comes to finding the perfect gift for a young gay boy. He will be gay. He's just, he's pre-gay. New York may find him excessive, but the world begs to differ. Wherever Larry goes, his opinion will be heard. I'm not thinking straight, I'm so I'm, He's keeping me up, Michael J. Fox, every night. Clomping around upstairs. Still clomping. Yes. Number two, the special section. Yeah, she got moved, special section. Well, what special section? What would be a heart-wrenching moment for most turns into comedy gold for Larry with his father taking his mother's last words quite literally. You didn't call me to tell me my mother died? The last died? words she said to me, if anything happens to me, you don't bother Larry. You don't spoil his trip in New York. It's insane! Larry soon finds himself at the cemetery's office, trying to make sense of why they buried his mother in the special section. Well, what are we gonna do about this special section thing? She can't, we can't keep her there. This is ridiculous. When Larry then steals flowers from a roadside memorial and has to deal with his friend Funkhauser, it just goes to show that even death can't phase Larry David. All right. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Because this 300 pound <laughs> is- What'd you say? What? Well, here's the thing. I asked her to go to the movies tonight, okay? and the therapist gave her the green light. I'm, I'm not in the mood. You're making me look like an asshole. I had the option of ordering dessert. And Who doesn't know that when you cut a doll's hair, it doesn't go back? No big deal. It's a Seinfeld yeah. reunion. I know. <laughs> That's a big deal. Get off my skis. Number one, Palestinian chicken. Um, 
You want to try out that uh, Palestinian chicken place? It may be a show about nothing, but this episode has everything. How in the world can they dare open up a Palestinian chicken restaurant next to the sacred land of that deli? The best Larry and Funkhauser confrontation, incredible anti-Semitic sex, and the greatest chicken you'll ever have. You're taking the chicken? You're yes, taking the chicken? Yes, of course. I'm gonna leave it. Funkhauser may not like how far Larry is willing to go to please himself, but the reality is, it's one of the reasons we can't get enough of him. I can't go in with wearing this yarmulke. Oh, yeah, she's no. shoving it in their face. Let's go in. It's that classic selfishness that makes Larry so funny in this episode, and it's why Palestinian Chicken gets the number one spot. This would be a fantastic place for Jews who are cheating on their spouses to come to. That and the fact that the chicken really is that good. I've never had chicken like this. Do you agree with our list? Without a doubt. What's your favorite Curb Your Enthusiasm episode? Yo, take it. You like this shit? For more enthusiastic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Uh, how do I end this thing? This is, this is never gonna end.